Oh, I thought they had a little bit of rot in it, so I took the windlass off and some plates and found out that it was termites rather than rot. One of the issues with uh, vlogging on a boat is the equipment. And what I was finding was that uh, it would literally grind to a halt. It would just stop working. Look at us, we're back in the marina again. Uh, not without reason though. First of all, we had to pick up our passports because we have new visas in them, which is very exciting. Now, some of you will know about the visa situation here. And I think by the time you see this video, we'll be well into, I don't know, the first month of using our visa. We actually got quite close in terms of our vlogging in real time, um, which is always quite a dangerous thing. It's great for you guys because you're very close to what we're actually doing. But in terms of uh, material and vlogging and uh, keeping you know, the momentum going, it can be difficult. So by the time you see this, I think you'll be a couple of months behind once more. Anyway, the point is, is that we have another 90 days in our passport, which is just brilliant. You know, we were worried it was going to be 60, maybe even 30, but uh, we have 90 days. So that's the first reason why we're back. Uh, we're also doing a bit of um, boat maintenance and some work. And one of the things I wanted to show you which uh, we did when we were last in the marina, and that was repair uh, a leak in the dinghy. It continues to leak, but it's not the same leak. That one was fine, that one worked. That was the one we did with Graham. Uh, this one turns out to be not but one, or two, or three, four new leaks in the dinghy. Let's kind of have a look. So your guess is as good as mine as to why we have these leaks, I just don't know. I mean, we're very careful when we take the dinghy onto the beach, although lately we have actually been anchoring the dinghy. It could be just general wear and tear. There are different leaks as well. Some are scratches, some are nicks. Yeah, who knows? Anyway, at least thanks to Graham when we were last here, uh, I know what I'm doing now, so hopefully this will get sorted. Meanwhile, the resident marina queen, Roy, of Roy's Ropes, Chaska, he's having his boat pulled apart. Chaska's looking beautiful. You remember when we were in uh, Kudat, he had a spray job and she's looking great. Uh, but he had some issues with his uh, bowsprit. Maybe he'll, uh, he'll tell us about it. Oh, I thought they had a little bit of rot in it. So I took the windlass off and some plates and found out that it was termites rather than rot. So it was off straight away. And I've just got a bloke in here now in the chain locker. Um, replacing a bulkhead that also had some termite in it. So hopefully in three days she'll all be good and sort of getting back together again. So, what, so you're getting a new one made up by a local guy here. Uh, what wood are you using? I'm using Salangan Batu. The original was teak, um, but obviously it's so hard to get now. So I'm using the next best thing, which is a local hardwood called Salangan Batu, but it's... Um, it's very dense, it's nearly twice as dense as teak, so I'm, I'm a bit worried about the extra weight that I'm going to be putting up forward. So I've got two Samson posts to go in as well, but I'll just have to move bits and pieces around um, to counteract the weight that I'm going to have forward, but all should be good. But it should last for a good while, it's a very good wood. So. behind me is a very messy bed and that is because Liz has cleared out her cupboard by her side of the bed which is 
this one here i'll do you a little close up so this is the deal this cupboard was once a sealed unit and in the refit we thought there appeared to be a lot of space here which could be used as storage so during the refit we actually cut it open and sure enough there's a massive cavity there we thought well this is a waste of space let's make this into a cupboard um, which we did but we realized afterwards that perhaps this remained a sealed unit because this is, is, is in fact where the exhaust pipe runs through from the engine out through into the lazarette uh, it may be a health and safety feature that uh, Oyster implemented to keep this sealed in case you got a nick in the exhaust pipe and you end up dying of exhaust fumes. Fortunately, that hasn't happened, but uh, there is a bit of a smell coming from there, which is probably coming through from the lazarette. So uh, we just wanted to have a quick look and it seems as if half of the fittings inside the cupboard have been sealed but there's still a few gaps which could do with sealing up so i'm just going to get some silicone out and uh, give that uh, a bit of a sealant and hopefully that will prevent this nasty smell from coming through i think if the problem persists then we may have to think about resealing this unit um, so uh, let's have a quick look inside the cupboard this is what it looks like now so you can see that's sealed there um, but up behind here uh, that's not sealed and also up inside uh, this has not been sealed either so we'll uh, we'll get the silicone out now and give that a go seems everyone's taking advantage of doing a bit of uh, boat maintenance while we're stuck in the marina and I've uh, just noticed Sharon and Lindsay have been playing around with their exhaust. Now, I just thought I'd just quickly film this because, of course, I've just been doing some repairs to our uh, exhaust cupboard. Now, this is something that is worth bearing in mind. And I was just chatting to Lindsay just now, and he was saying this isn't something that you would uh, think about. And he's absolutely right because the exhaust pipe is one of those things that kind of sits quietly on the boat. You don't see it, it's doing its job quietly. Uh, but uh, he checked one day to find that it had corroded around the fitting on the exhaust elbow going out of the boat. So uh, Sharon and Lindsay got up early this morning, whipped out the old exhaust and have got to put in the new one. Now, that's a bastard of a job if ever there was one. But amazingly they managed to get it out of their boat within an hour. I think on Esper that would take us two days to remove. But I uh, just wanted to quickly show you what to watch out for. Um, let's just have a quick look. Morning. Today I'm going to take you on a little shopping trip to a shopping mall called Karamunsing. Why am I doing this you may ask? Uh, well very occasionally we get the odd snidey comment saying that Malaysia is a third world country, uh, a term which I think has probably fallen out of favour now. Uh, of course it isn't. You can get pretty much everything here in Malaysia and Karamunsing is a good example of this. It's where you go to get all your technological issues solved, uh, computer shops, computer peripherals, phones, all that kind of thing. Uh, it's also a bit of a rabbit warren and it's very easy to get lost in there if you've never been there before. But just before that, we'll say hello to the security guy. Hi. Morning, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good man. Good night. Thank you for looking after us. Okay. Good day. <laughs> Cheers. The other reason I wanted to document this is just to talk quickly about uh, equipment that we use on board for editing. I, before I got my mini PC, had a Dell XPS 15 which uh, back in the day was rated as one of the best laptops for doing video editing. Unfortunately it's got a very slimline profile and what we've found in the tropics is that these laptops overheat very quickly. They're not really designed to uh, keep the laptop cool or at least not designed to do video editing on a hot boat in the tropics. So uh, we managed to get hold of an MSI laptop. Now these are gaming laptops, they're built like tanks, they have lots and lots of fans on them. So that's what Liz uses and even though it's only what two three years old it's uh, the screen's broken so I've got to go and get it fixed. I hope that we can because the only other laptop we've got as backup at the moment is the Dell we tried it last week and uh, it's still doing the same problem. It just will not perform properly. Whee. 
So uh, anyway, I'm going to go into Caraman Sink, get some cables made up, go and see if I can fix the laptop and show you this rabbit warren. So the thing with Caraman Sink is that it has about three different sets of elevators and stairs. When you go up one, the next one up doesn't follow behind it, so you have to walk around and find the next one. I got really lost in this place when I first came here. It's so confusing. Here we go. Well, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, he's got a spare screen and he reckons he can fix it within an hour. How good is that, hey? Hey, how are you? <laughs> How's it going, Alvin? I'm okay. Right, there we are, done. Another successful shopping trip. That is Liz's laptop repaired. Two cables made, uh, picked up some fans for the water maker because I noticed that's gone. Uh, total expenditure, I think, is £90. I mean, that's cheaper than a new laptop, as I said, so that's good. Right, I bumped into Alvin, and we're going to go for lunch. Magical mystery tour. I don't know where he is or where his car is. So, hopefully, he's going to take me somewhere nice and interesting and tasty. So, that's Karamunsing, one of many shopping malls in KK, which serves all our needs and needs and refurbies here easy for me to say um, but I just wanted to show you this I know it's not specifically about sailing but it does bring up a couple of interesting points and that is our dependency on technology of course not just just generally speaking but also as vloggers as well you know it's always a concern of mine of equipment going wrong when we're in remote places now if we're away for three months or so that's fine uh, you know we've got spare cameras we have got backup laptops if we need to uh, you know we could struggle through um, but the problem, of course, is during pandemic, if you're locked down somewhere for an extended period of time, as we saw, we had to get Liz's laptop repaired. Uh, now, if we'd been at anchor in the Philippines, I doubt very much we would have been able to have got that repaired. So uh, we're lucky that we are stuck here in a place that has all these facilities. And of course, the shopping is great. We can do our laundry. Uh, the restaurants are open. So at the moment, we're, we're good. And I'm just looking at myself, I realize I need a bloody good shave, don't I? By the way, do you like my new shirt? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs>